Hello everyone, a warm welcome back to my channel. I'm thrilled to have you join me again as we dive into another exciting tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to gather 3D models from different sources and then bring them together with fantastic lighting techniques in Blender to make your scene look truly spectacular. At the end of this tutorial, you'll have a better understanding of how to set up a scene and give it a stunning look. But before we jump in, I want to take a moment to thank Lexi C16 for providing the amazing car model that we'll be using in our today's scene. It's available for free on Sketchfab. You'll find a link to this model in the description below, so make sure to check it out. Top right of the interface, select the render engine drop down and choose Cycles. Next, we'll want to make sure that Blender is using our GPU to render for faster and more efficient processing. Go to Edit in the top menu, select Preferences and navigate to the Systems tab. In the QR section, check that your GPU is selected. This ensures that Blender will utilize your GPU when rendering. Now let's set up our camera to get the perfect shot. Select the default camera and under its setting, change the focal length to 60mm. This gives us a nice balance between a realistic perspective and a slightly compressed background, which helps to bring out the cast features without too much of distraction. With the camera still selected, go to view in the top menu, then align view and choose align camera to view. This aligns the camera to our current viewport, making it easier to frame our scene. To find in the camera angle, press N to open the side panel, go to the view tab and check camera to view. This allows us to adjust the view while the camera stays aligned. Once you are satisfied with the angle, make sure to uncheck camera to view to unlock the camera in place and avoid accidentally moving it. For now, you can delete the default light in the scene as we will be setting up custom lighting later on. It's time to move on to building the environment around our car. First, we'll start by setting up the ground and its material to create that authentic desert feel. I'll be using a sandy texture to match the arid environment. For this, I'll download high quality models and materials from Pixel Megascan, which offers a fantastic library of assets to bring your scenes to life with realistic details. So we'll download this material. And once you have the material, apply it to the ground plate in the scene. To fine tune the texture, we'll need to adjust its scale and color. To do this efficiently, let's enable the node wrangler add-on. Go to edit in the top menu, select preferences, then add-ons and search for node wrangler. Check the box to enable it. With node wrangler activated, select the base color node in the shader editor and press Ctrl T. This shortcut automatically adds a texture coordinate and mapping node connected to your texture, giving you control over texture scaling and rotation. Now connect the mapping node to all the texture maps to ensure consistency across the material. Set the rotation on the x-axis to 67 degrees for the correct orientation and adjust the scaling to 40 to scale down the textures and fit the scene better. To give the ground a warmer, more desert-like appearance, we'll perform some color correction. Add an RGB curves node to the shader and enable only the red channel. Then slightly lift the curve upwards. This will increase the red intensity in the texture, giving it a more reddish hue, which is perfect for a desert environment. Next, we'll add some nearby elements to give the scene more depth and realism. I'm placing a few rocks and dead tree logs close to the car to create a more rugged and natural look. These elements will help guide the viewer's eye towards the car, making it the focal point of the scene. In the background, I will be setting up some desert cliffs at a distance. As the scene is ready, I would like to add some depth of field to make it look more realistic. So let's click the camera and go to its settings. Here I will set depth of field. 
and choose the front part of the car that I want to have in focus. Right now the f-stop is at 2.8 and I don't see any blur in the background or in the foreground so I'll make it 0.5. Yeah that's cool. Now we can see a little bit of blur in the foreground and in the background. Once our set is ready and all the elements are in place, we'll move on to the lighting. We'll start by heading over to the world properties tab and adding a sky texture to the color slot. This will set the overall tone of our lighting, giving us that bright daylight feel. Here you can try the same settings. So let's keep the sun size as it is. Sun intensity to 0.01. Sun elevation to 178 degree. Sun rotation to 50 degree. Altitude to 10 meters. Let's make the air totally zero so that we can remove the yellow horizon. We'll reduce the dust level to 0.781 and ozone to 2 to make it much more blue and let's reduce the strength from 1 to 0.5 now let's go to the shader editor and change the shader type to world i'll also add a rgb curve to the sky texture which will help us adjust the intensity of the sky as i want the sky to be a little bit darker so if we move the curve up it becomes brighter and if we move down it becomes darker so we'll just slightly move it down with our sky texture now corrected, it's time to add some artificial lighting to make the car stand out against the background. Right now the car is blending in too much with the surroundings and we want to bring out those details that make it pop. This technique is often used in real life photography as well. Sometimes natural sunlight just isn't enough to properly illuminate a car model. So to enhance the realism of our scene, we'll place a sunlight in our scene. The goal here is to match the position of this light with the sun that's already present in our sky texture. This step is crucial for achieving consistent lighting across the scene. To do this, add a sunlight from the add menu. Once the sunlight is in place, rotate and position it so that it aligns with the direction of the sun in the sky texture. This will ensure that the shadows and highlights on the car and the environment match the light direction, making the scene look more natural. Fine tune the intensity and the color of sunlight to match the overall tone of the scene. Perhaps adding a slight warm tint to replicate the golden hour light. This small adjustment can significantly boost the realism of the scene, making sure that both the natural and artificial lighting blend seamlessly together. Next, we'll add a spotlight directly above the car to illuminate the top surfaces. This helps in bringing out the car's contours and shape. Since the default white light looks too artificial, we'll sample a sky blue color from the background sky. Adjust the intensity so that the light looks natural and believable. To address the dark areas in the front of the car, let's add an area light aimed at the car's grill. The grill is currently in shadows and needs some illumination to bring out its details. Again, We'll change the color to a subtle blue sample from the sky and adjust the intensity accordingly. We'll add one more area light in the front bottom area of the car to ensure the lower parts are well lit. Repeat the same process of color picking and intensity adjustment. Finally, let's add another area light to the side of the car to create separation from the background. This light will help define the car's edges, making it stand out against the desert backdrop. With all these lights in place, you'll notice that even though we have added artificial lights, the overall lighting still feels natural, as if it's all coming from the sun and the sky. This is the key to successfully lighting exterior scenes, using artificial lights subtly to enhance what's already there, making sure the lighting feels realistic. Finally, to add atmosphere and depth, we'll create some fog. This is done by creating a simple box around our scene. Make it so big that it occupies all the cliffs. Also place the box behind the car as we don't want the fog to cover the car. Now with the cube selected, let's go to the material properties and give a new material. We'll name the material fog and go to shader editor. We'll delete the principal BSDF. Now let's apply a volume scatter shader to get that fog effect. This fog will help blend the elements together creating a cohesive and visually striking environment. Connect it to the volume node. As we can see that the density of the fog is too much and it has covered and blocked all the background. So we'll reduce density to 0.002 and stroke to 0.9 to make the fog layer very thin so that we can see our background. 
So here we'll set the color value to match the environment color, which is something like bluish. You can copy the same settings. The metallic silver color looks fine, but I want to try black color on the car. So let's change the material properties and make it black, which is one of my favorite color. Here again, you can copy the same settings to make the car body color black. Since the scene is looking a little bit darker, I'll just go to the color management tab and there I'll increase the exposure from 0 to 0.5. And there you have it. Our 3D scene is now complete. We have covered everything from setting up the camera to building the environment and finally adding those finishing touches with lighting and atmosphere. But remember, the real magic happens when you take what you've learned and apply it on your own. So I encourage you to dive into Blender, experiment with different models, lighting setups and environmental elements. Try creating your own scenes using the techniques we have discussed today. The more you practice, the more confident and creative you'll become in your 3D art journey. If you have any doubts or questions about the process, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I am here to help and would like to assist you in overcoming any challenges you might face. Also, I would love to hear what you think about this tutorial. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to me. I also want to take a moment to thank you for sticking with me till the end of this tutorial. Your support means the world to me and I am thrilled to be part of your creative process. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow artists and hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on future content. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.